Hey, you cryptozoons. Tonight's stories are Crypto wallet manufacturers respond to the Emergencies Act. DHH, Bitcoin skeptic no longer. El Salvador wants foreign investors. The date is February 21st, 2022. And welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for the podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and this industry that surrounds it. We bring you new stories on familiar topics. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. If you're new here and you find that you like your show, subscribe and rate us. If you're on Spotify, you can do that right from the app. So give Tex and I five stars. It'll help other people find their way to this podcast. So there's a lot to talk about here. California State Senator Signe Kamlager introduced a bill to amend the state's code. Now, this change would let people make some kinds of payments in crypto to the state of California. It would allow a state agency to, quote, accept cryptocurrency as a method of payment for the provision of government services. Erica Rhodes, an elementary school teacher running to represent the state's 30th congressional district in the U.S. House, She's accepting Bitcoin and other tokens as campaign tokens, campaign uh, donations. She's facing off against anti-crypto legislator Brad Sherman, and we know him, right? So the Cali legislators might be ahead of the curve as far as crypto goes. I don't know. You tell me. Crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. Let me know. Are California politicians ahead of the curve? Now, before we get into tonight's stories, let's take a quick look at the market. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $1.73 trillion. That's up 0.47% in 24. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin up 0.01%, Ethereum up 2.32%, Tether, Binance Coin down 2.21%, and USDC. The top five NFT collections by 24-hour volume on OpenSea are MFers up 13%, Cat Blocks Genesis Collection up 286%, Tasty Bones XYZ up 320%. And then we've got two brand new collections, Bunny Buddies and Infinite Realm Official. They're both in their first day. So now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices. So Make sure you do your own research. Crypto wallet manufacturers respond to the Emergencies Act. So, Canada, come on. Okay, last week, Deputy PM Christia Freeland confirmed that those who donated to the protests using the platforms like GoFundMe and GiveSendGo, they could expect to have their bank accounts frozen. This would be authorized under the Emergencies Act that was put into place by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The Deputy PM said, The names of both individuals and entities, as well as crypto wallets, have been shared by the RCMP with financial institutions, and accounts have been frozen, and more accounts will be frozen. Crowdfunding platforms and payment service providers have started the registration process with FinTrack. FinTrack is Canada's national uh, financial intelligence agency. She added, in terms of the specifics on whose accounts have been frozen, you now have the regulations, the financial service providers have those regulations as well, and they are working with law enforcement, will be making the operational decisions. So the Ontario Superior Court sent out Mareva injunctions. When TV shows and movies talk about courts freezing people's assets. This is the kind of thing that they're talking about. Um, that can happen because of a Mareva injunction. And usually it's, it's for things like keeping people from fleeing to another jurisdiction. One of the recipients of this notice was Nunchuck. Nunchuck makes non-custodial multi-sig wallets. They literally couldn't give the information over even if they wanted to. So when Ontario Superior Court sent Nunchuck a Mareva injunction, they took to Twitter to respond. They tweeted out, quote, Yesterday, the Ontario Superior Court of Justice sent us a Mareva injunction. 
ordering us to freeze and disclose information about the assets involved in the Freedom Convoy 2022 movement. Here's our official response. And then there's a couple attachments. One is a screenshot of the court order. The other was the response, which I'll read now. Nunchuck is a self-custodial, collaborative, multi-sig Bitcoin wallet. We are a software provider, not a custodial financial intermediary. Our software is free to use. It allows people to eliminate single points of failure and store Bitcoin in the safest way possible while preserving privacy. We do not hold any keys. Therefore, we cannot freeze our users' assets. We cannot prevent them from being moved. We do not have knowledge of the existence, nature, value, and location of our users' assets. This is by design. And here it comes. Please look up how self-custody and private keys work. When the Canadian dollar becomes worthless, we will be here to serve you too. And that's a thinly veiled suggestion that Canada's use of financial institutions to rage war on dissent isn't likely to engender faith in the national banking system. In a separate tweet, the company added, Speaking of which, we will add a non-email login option and make it a priority in our roadmap. And see, because that is the only piece of information that they require from their users is an email address. Nothing else. They're not alone in this. Edge Wallet also responded. They said, In the wake of ongoing turmoil taking place in the Canadian capital of Ottawa, Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland has requested, via the Emergencies Act, that various financial services companies freeze accounts of those linked to protesters occupying the region, as well as those providing funding to the protests but not present physically. Regardless of whether the protests resonate with individuals or not, financial seizure is an unprecedented action which must be taken seriously. It is with great consideration that we would like to share our official response to the request that Canadian users' edge accounts be frozen. And then there's a picture of the magic conch shell from SpongeBob with the caption, no. So that's where we are. These measures were meant to fight terrorists. They were meant to fight money launderers. They were meant to fight drug cartels. They were not meant to go after donors uh, for political actions that they're not even present at. Countries like Canada enact financial measures like this at their own peril. They're doing everything they can to push their citizens off the Canadian dollar and into crypto. Case in point. DHH, Bitcoin skeptic, no longer. Under the Twitter handle DHH, the creator of Ruby on Rails web development platform, David Hansen, told his 438,000 followers he is no longer a Bitcoin skeptic. He wrote, I still can't believe that this is the protest that would prove every Bitcoin crank a profit. And for me to have a slice of humble pie. And I admit that I was wrong on crypto's fundamental necessity in Western democracies. Included in the tweet was a link. And that link takes you to a blog post entitled, I was wrong. We need crypto. And in that blog post, he said it straight out in the past. He's been skeptical about Bitcoin and the crypto industry in general. You know, ever since the early 2010s, he's shared that some of his biggest arguments against it were related to energy consumption, transaction fees, the lack of real decentralization, tether, and other reasons. But even when the weight of those arguments weren't enough, they weren't enough of a reason to disregard cryptocurrency as a tool, as a tool to support freedom and democracy in situations like Canada's. He disagreed with the way Canada enacted martial law as a response to peaceful protest movements. He wrote, It's clear to me now that I was too hasty to completely dismiss crypto on the basis of all of the things wrong with it at the moment. Instead of appreciating the fundamental freedom to transact that it's our, currently our best shot at protecting. And I was just talking about this, right? It's kind of like what Morgan Creek digital co-founder Anthony Pompliano said. On Twitter, he wrote, quote, Thorian governments are Bitcoin's best marketing team. And he's right. El Salvador wants foreign investors. Salvadoran President Nayib Bukele is back in the news again. 
and this time he wants to offer citizenship to people who invest in his country, which seems pretty reasonable. So Bukele took to Twitter, and he let the crypto community know this on Sunday. He said he was sending a list of 52 reforms to Congress. Among them, Bukele calls for removing red tape, reducing bureaucracy, creating tax incentives, and offering citizenship to foreign investors. His tweet read, quote, I'm sending 52 legal reforms to Congress to remove red tape, reduce bureaucracy, create tax incentives, citizen in, sh- in exchange for investments, new securities laws, stability contracts, etc. The plan is simple. As the world falls into tyranny, we'll create a freedom, haven for freedom. And he is promising to make El Salvador one of the most freedom-centric nations. The country is all set to launch their billion-dollar Bitcoin volcano bonds next month. Now, the funds for that are to go to what's being called the world's first Bitcoin city. El Salvador made history last year when, in September of 2021, they became the first country to legalize crypto. Since then, the World Bank and the IMF, the uh, International Monetary Fund, they are continuing to warn El Salvador about the, quote, ill impacts of using Bitcoin. They're employing El Salvador to revoke the Bitcoin law. And honestly, they sound kind of desperate. I wonder why. Oh, maybe because El Salvador reportedly achieved a gross domestic product growth of over 10%, the highest in its history. Bukele tweeted, El Salvador's GDP grew 10.3% in 2021, and now its exports, a main driver of economic growth, grew 13% this January compared to January 2021. And we're looking at another double-digit GDP growth this year? By the way, El Salvador never had a double-digit GDP growth before 2021. Maybe IMF and the World Bank are worried that El Salvador doesn't need them anymore. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Do you have questions or comments about the show? Reach out and let us know. Send us an email at crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. That's crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. You can also find us on Torum and Twitter. Links to those platforms will be in the show notes. And please, if you could, like, subscribe, share, comment, and review the podcast. Also, if you're listening on Spotify, they do have a feature where you can rate podcasts directly from the app. So give us a five-star rating. It'll really help Tex and I out, and it will also help other people find this content. So getting the word out there helps them and us. And hey, give Crypto in 5 Minutes a listen. We're up to now 26 educational videos and counting. Five minutes to explain one concept in crypto. And with that, may all your investments go up and to the right.